Hey folks, this is Vagrant. Welcome back to the Thaumaturge. In the last video, we made our way to Warsaw, proceeded to get into a fight with some Russians, and got ourselves thrown into jail. We've been uh, released by someone we don't know who, and we're now heading back into the city itself. And maybe I should wrap that crafter to the child. Sure, I've no idea what any of that means. Go to your father's funeral at Povaski Cemetery. So, do we have a map? Out of curiosity, we do. Let's have a little look here. There's quite a lot. Go on, there's me. Looking sexy. Lots of buildings we can enter. Uh, there's a carriage over there, so I'm assuming that'll get us. Oh, tram stop, carriage. Ah, oh, that's what they are. Okay. Oh, I guess we can do this. Yeah, okay. Let's have a little wander around and see what we can see along the way. Chat to some people. Don't make me call the guys, the shift just won't end. I'm not surprised, look at what you bloody... Oh, I wonder if this is where my father died. What are the chances he wasn't murdered? They feel low. Not allowed in there yet. Like, he was surely murdered, right? <laughs> His building's been exploded. Oh, actually, I know for a fact, because there's a cosmetic system in this game, that you can change your aesthetic. Mm. I don't know how. I wonder if it's just something I haven't unlocked yet. Oh? Oh, I don't have anything. Okay, cool. We're going to unlock some new stuff, though. All right, let's follow the red mist and try to find Papa's funeral. Is it in the sewer? Catch a tram. Ah, nice. Okay. Barber. Wait, what? <laughs> Okay, Southern Shwadotototl, and then Provalsky Cemetery, where there's a barber. <laughs> a perfectly logical place for the barber to be hanging out. Maybe he's, um... Well, you know, you have to make the dead people look nice, if you can have, like, an open casket. Maybe that's what he's doing. I'm not adding any of the buildings yet. <clears throat> Game's closing me off for a little while. What good is a watch to a dead man? That's what I'm saying. What good's a haircut to a dead man? When I die, don't bother giving me a haircut. Just give me like a... Just make me look all scraggly. Make me look like a clown. It's like one final little joke. What the fuck is this? A parking job like that should get you sent to Siberia. It seems fine. What good is a watch to a dead man? Are you all okay? <laughs> the text doesn't feel... I'm not having a little photo. Um, oh, God, thing over here. Stanislaw's obituary. Stanislaw Svalsky, widely respected citizen, a thaumaturge, philanthropist, entrepreneur, father and husband. I think we've already read this, haven't we? Yeah. I miss my woman. Me too, buddy. Me too. I don't have one or something. Not there. All women are my women. Tomb, R.I.P. Marja Wisnowska, Polish stage artist. Beloved daughter, a woeful mother. Tomb, here lies Jan Chimilek. Chim, chim, chim. You can't do CHM. That's silly. A dear friend. In 1891, he met his end. What he is now lies deep inside what he was. Never you mind. I want, like, the kind of gravestone when I die. That when people look at it in a hundred years' time for their stupid TikTok videos, they're like, what the hell occurred here? No, you can't talk to me. Not yet. So I want to make sure we full explore before we uh, chat to anyone. Didn't she have a brother? It's me. I'm the brother. But I don't want to miss anything. I'm really paranoid about that now. <laughs> Tomb, Graf, Friedrich, Karl, and Nettlerode. Sign, Doctor. Maria Mukanov. Root by I'm. Kalurgus. Here lies the one who broke Norwid's heart. Seems just like know all the dead people. I guess if anyone's going to know all the dead people, the Thaumaturge would be up there. Nothing else in the area, I don't think. There's some lovely tombs. I don't think I'd want a big, like, mausoleum. You know? We don't need to take up that much real estate when we're dead. I don't really go to a grave. I mean, just think about this. I don't really... I don't have, like, a tomb that I visit. I don't have, like, a gravestone that I visit. Hello. I'm sure you don't remember me. My name's Hayat, Mordechai Hayat. I wanted to offer my condolences. Thank you. Thank you. Please, forgive my prying. I know Mr. Sholsky took nitroglycerin for his heart, but how did he pass away? 
Was that his cause of death? His heart? My father didn't have a heart. We've ruled out any coronary causes since the doctors couldn't confirm whether the deceased had a heart. Yes, I, I understand. My condolences, once again. I'll leave you alone. I'm sure you want to bid farewell to your father. I like the prideful answers, because they're weird. <laughs> they're all so strange. <laughs> like, that's, imagine he goes to a funeral, like, oh, I'm sorry, what happened to him? Was it his heart? And he goes, the man didn't have a heart. Like, just answer like a normal person, for God's sake. Veronin, hello, Veronin. We used to have a, um, a footballer played for Liverpool called Andre Veronin. He was terrible. He had a ponytail. I think I ought to arrest you, Taumaturge. I haven't done anything, officer. What's the problem? I barely recognize you either. You still haven't figured out who I am? Don't be surprised. The last time we saw one another was 20 kilos ago. <laughs> Uncle Veronian? I will not keep you. That guy's probably all alone back there. Among those vultures circling Stasio. I'm sure she'll be glad to see you. Go on. We'll talk later. Uncle, I do get the feeling we have a good relationship with our sister, given the letter we were going to send her. Sister? Victor. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I'm so glad you came. I wasn't sure if my telegram had reached you. I'm glad too. How are you holding up? All oh, this caught me off guard, but... For now, I don't have time to think things through calmly. Look at yourself. What happened? Uh. I took a short trip to a Warsaw jail. What? Are you joking? During the funeral? Are you all right? Everything's fine, don't worry. Have you written to Mother? Yes, but what can you expect? You know what Nadia is like. It was never her style to show up for family events like this. It's getting late. And we've still got the reading of Papa's will ahead of us at home. And I'll leave you two alone. I suppose you've got your own matters to clear up. Say to say goodbye to your father, sure. Fine. Let's get this over with. So, it was me who got it right in the end. Back then, on the train platform, was the last time we saw one another. Fifteen years ago. After brief suffering, fell asleep in the Lord. Brief. I hope not. <laughs> Did you write this yourself? A tyrant, bigot, and liar, mistakenly absorbed, died after suffering all too briefly. That's better, and definitely closer to the truth. The day you died, you visited me in my dreams. I was a child when you hounded me out of here, and I remember you as you were back then. But in my dream, you looked older. <laughs> you gave me hell as usual. You didn't believe I'd succeed. You were wrong. I've come back with two saliters. I'm sorry there are so many things I didn't get to say to your face. All those years, I said them over and over to myself in my head. How you were never able to admit a mistake. You never sought blame on yourself. Someone else was always guilty. Never you. Mother, because she wanted something for herself in life. Ligia, because she wasn't born a boy. Me, because I was born a thaumaturge, but I didn't want to live following your principles. And now... <sighs> Farewell, father. Am I intruding? A little bit. 
I was reflecting at the grave of my beloved father. You tricked me. I heard something else. Stanislav and I were acquainted. You might say I knew everything about your father. Mr. Viktor Shulsky, isn't it? Your absence from Warsaw has happily come to an end, I hope. Oh, I'm here. I'm just gonna- I'm just leaning into the pride, baby. With all due respect, this is my personal business. It was my father who knew you, not me. True. Please forgive me. I meant no harm. Again, my condolences. I'm gonna point out that he's got a burden on his face and my father died in a I didn't catch your name. My name is Kanichkin. Ivan Kanichkin. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ivan Kanichkin. Such interesting friends you had. Floating on that bench. <laughs> I'm more tired than I thought. Or oh, Kanichkin has a flaw, maybe. Okay. Josefina Zulska. Ni Hohen Lohe. Great grandmother Josefina. Josefina. A thaumaturge. Nikodem Zulski. Grandpa Nikodem. A thaumaturge. Nikodem. I barely remember him. Why are my family not thaumaturges? Mother, if you're watching, why aren't you a thou- I guess my mum is, well, <laughs> dabbled with something similar at the very least. Papa's dad. We move on. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and so forth. Yeah, that's far too much silence. <laughs> we can go. The hardest thing was getting the lid of the urn. The scattering I could handle. You can play the clown, but I know how much this has cost you. I'm glad you went. Love at a funeral? Eros postmortem? Is it suitable for a young lady in mourning to fraternize with bachelors? Excuse me. Constantia Shabowska, the Warsaw Courier. Could I ask for a brief comment? Faina. <laughs> Thank you. And you, sir? You can ask, but I've chased the hyena away. I suggest you leave. Otherwise, I'll overlook your womanhood and make sure you can never pronounce a single syllable correctly again. You'd permit that to happen, Judge? Maybe I should write about this. And who would let you print it? Someday the press will get the Russian boot off its neck, Judge. I'm afraid none of us will live to see the day, my dear. <laughs> Come on, children. I'm sure my Pietia is already waiting for us at home. I'd love to see my cousin. Are you coming with us? Thank you, but if you don't mind, I'd prefer to spend some time alone. Remember, we're waiting with the lawyer. And look after yourself. It is not the city you remember anymore. I just want to wander there on my own time, do some exploration, do some reading. Obituary note. So, first of all, <laughs> all RPG protagonists hate journalists by default, and journalists are always the worst. And the fact is, she came, like, like I would not be that aggressive in real life. I would not threaten to punch out a random woman journalist because she was a little bit rude. But you can't come up, it's the funeral of her father. And you're coming up and making snide comments and stuff like that, so... She definitely deserves a shellacking, but not physical violence. Just hell to go away. A betray, the late Franciszek Helmantel went to, went to be with the Lord following brief yet painful agony, having received the sacraments on August 18th, 1905, at the age of 65. The bereaved family is asking all relatives and friends to join them at the funeral service held at St. Anna's Church on Krakowski <laughs> on August 25th at 11, followed by the transfer of the body to the family tomb at Pawlowski Cemetery. Pawlowski. Pawlowski. What is it? There's a thing. Don't know what the thing is. It makes me sad. 
Okay, let's have a little poke around. Let me try this again. Ha! Parish announcement. Saturday, 7 a.m. Votive service in honor of Our Lady of the Rosary for the intention of the brothers and sisters of confraternity of the Holy Rosary. 9 a.m. Holy Mass, which will be followed by the recitation of the Litany of Loretto with a prayer for the conversion of sinners. Got myself a skull point. Right, so do I need to... No. So we can now get this, right? Cool. Interesting that heart and... Hmm. That didn't give me a heart point. Funny skill, though. Uh, we now have... Action, reaction. Does a bit more damage. A quick attack. Uh, eight to nine, so powerful mind is a bit. Mm, make sure he's focused on the tank damage, so I should focus. Okie dokie, let's have a little poke around. A little drunken lad to stumble and boot. Not allowed in the mist. This isn't Silent Hill. Or is it? Bom, bom, bom. Is that a. No. <laughs> I mean, it kind of looks like a penis. For sure, the Grand Derby. Paul Mbatakowski. Mokotowski. October 5th starts at 2 p.m. And some more Josefa Novinska's Funeral Parlor in Warsaw, 16 Targova Street. Offers first rate decorations and equipment, arranges funerals ranging from humble to extravagant, low prices. Northern Schwodemischke. I'm going to stop trying to say these words. <laughs> I need to read them in my head. You don't need to. I don't, I don't need to talk. That's a YouTuber, right? Oh. That was close by. I hate night shifts. I mean, I don't know what you think you're doing, but you don't seem to be doing any work. You seem to be staggering on the spot. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Very sleepy. Young Mr. Shulsky, after all these years, all these years, goodness gracious, you're drenched! Good evening, Grazinka. Evening, evening. My, you're soaked. Come to the kitchen now. You can warm up by the stove. And that drunken judge, maybe you can drag him out too. Where's my sister? In the study, already waiting with the lawyer. She said you were running late. Should I make you some cocoa, Master? It would warm you up a little. Make an extra creamy one for Ligia. Oh, I won't skimp on her. Now, your sister's putting a brave face on all this, but she's really having a hard time. It's lovely to see you again. But Aww. that's enough jabber for now. I've got the guests and the cocoa, and I've got to whip up some food for you all later. We'll talk soon. <clears throat> Have you noticed that you're often... Where are all these people? <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm crazy, but I feel like in video games, you're usually pretty rich. Like, your character is very rarely poor in video games. I'm trying to think of any... I mean, there's definitely examples. I'm just thinking RPGs like this, I feel like your character is often off, <clears throat> off some form of money. I guess it gives you more scope. Because, like, if, if I was her, let's say my character was uh, that woman who's clearly the uh, maid, the head maid, or whatever. She, um... Oh, it's called Garinka. Maybe she's a grandmother. Anyway, let's say she was a maid. And you were a maid character. I guess because of your lack of money and your lack of access, there's less you can do. You always have to be in some form of position of authority. Otherwise, your options are limited. This says something about life. <laughs> yeah. Come on. You can do it. You can. I can walk through the people. That helps. Father's portrait. The portrait depicts father in his twilight years, the serious expression on his face, the proud posture, the grimoire in his hand, combined with the dark background and lack of embellishments. It all reflects the strictness and pragmatism he always had. Good old Stanislaw. However, a faint red streak can be seen around his figure. Apparently, artists are particularly sensitive to seeing things that usually escape the human eye. 
This one should have received double em emolument. Emolument. It's a new word for me. For capturing the thaumaturgic aura. Emolument. I'm assuming that means like praise props or something like that. The Warsaw Courier, evening extra. Here's the latest news on the riots that disrupted His Majesty Emperor Nikolai II's speech today. A moment after our gracious emperor announced Georgi Skalon as the new Governor General of Warsaw, a group of troublemakers started yelling most disgraceful slogans. Despite reinforced security, there was a scuffle. The gendarmerie were quick to get the situation under control, however. A few people were injured, including two policemen who came to help. 30 people charged with public nuisance and boring walling were taken into custody. Petcha. I don't want to put my foot in my mouth again. I already failed to recognize someone once today, but you look familiar. Well, I should think so. I was the victim of one of your starling hunts. Voronins must not be very memorable, cousin. Pietia, forgive me, and for shooting you as well. Huh. How are you doing? Just some heart problems, not a subject for today. I'm sorry about Uncle Stanislav. Forgive me for not coming to the funeral. I can't bear cemeteries. We'll have to meet up again. Goodbye. I've got to remember it's Stanislav. W's don't really exist. Well, they exist in Warsaw. You would think that like Warsaw would be Warsaw or something, you know. But it's not. It's a football player called Stanislav. Plays for... Who does Stanislav play for? West Ham? 365 dinner recipes for Vives Lottes by Lucina C. Capon or pullet with sausages. Poulet? Pullet? Clean and pluck the capon while warm, burn off the remaining feathers and nuts over the fire. Slice off the giblets, add them to the broth. Rinse, salt throughout, and roast on a spit while coating with butter. This sounds amazing. <laughs> when finishing roasting, put a large spoonful of sausage butter inside, sprinkle the top with breadcrumbs, douse in liquid butter, and fry in the pan. No wonder Veronin's got heart problems. If you don't have sausages, a piece of butter with pepper will do. You can also put the sausage butter in the capon once it's on the platter. I want... First of all, what is sausage butter and how do I get it in my life? <laughs> that sounds amazing. Go to your five thirty for okay. Pour a pot. Okay, so this is liquor, liqueur, quince liqueur. Quince liqueur sounds disgusting. However, pour a pot of ripe, duly pickled, picked quince fruits into a four-gallon demijohn and pour in a light cold syrup with six pounds of sugar and two gallons of water. Add ten pounds of amber, stir perfectly, and add half a gallon of your best spirit. Seal and place in moderately warm place out of the sun for ten days, stirring several times per day, shaking the demijohn. After 10 to 12 days, when the clumps are sunk and the liquid is completely clear, pour into bottles, cork tightly, and keep in a cool, dry cellar. <clears throat> oh, I'm glad you're here. I thought I'd have to drink alone. So many goodies laid out for the guests. Having trouble picking something for yourself, Judge? But this was Stasio's. It was special. Amber liqueur with quinces. I think you mean Quince liqueur with amber, right? If it's not here, I'm sure it's in the basement. But I won't grope around down there in the dark now. I've got my hands full. I'll have a grope in the dark, don't you worry about well, it. I don't want to trouble you either. Victor, could you track down a little bottle for your uncle? I suppose I'm obligated to accept this mission. <laughs> Good lad. A nephew like you. He's a treasure. I mean, is it? I've got a nephew. And if I asked him to do something, and he said the words, I suppose a mission like this would be an obligation. I'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> why, why are you speaking like this? I know it's olden days, but still. Mother's portrait. A portrait of mother from her youth. She stands proud, wearing a white dress and a silk scarf thrown over her exposed shoulders. She's clearly not wearing a scarf. Her <laughs> long dark hair flows down her back and she glances at the viewer with a piercing smile. Bare skin and a frivolous hairstyle. That's not how I remembered her. Nardi as a young unkempt maiden. It's hard to believe. This shocking vision of the painter must have been created in a previous era, a time when hearts were stirred with violent emotions, poems were created to the sound of a storm, love stories had to end tragically, etc, etc. Father actually commissioned such a painting? It's always a, a weird 
thing when you realise your parents are actual human beings, you know? I don't think you ever really get used to that. <laughs> Sauvignon de Bordeaux. Bottle of white wine from southern France. No, come back. It's a way to... If I don't move, it stays. Small bottle of quince liqueur with amber, a beverage for true connoisseurs. Connoisseurs is one of those words that... No, that's fine. The bottle likes used a sweet aroma of quince and the sin and oh no typo and the sincere sincere. Let's try that again, shall we? <laughs> the bottle exudes the sweet aroma of quince and the sincere joy of an upcoming meeting. It is a beverage that brings people together and sweetens the bitterness of everyday life. An element of a ritual that two old friends would eagerly indulge in. Oh, okay. She just pressed Y and it stays on the screen. Pinot Noir from Oregon. A bottle of red wine from the United States. Hard to get. An in uh, an, an, uh, God damn. An inability to articulate brought on by great surprise clings to the bottle. Difficult to mouth even a word of gratitude for the unique gift. Words got stuck in the throat. Despite the adoration for this particular liqueur. Liquor. It is a favourite beverage, but an unwelcome gift. Every bottle found in Shulsky's cellar contains a creditable beverage. Uncle Veronin wouldn't disregard any of them. When you're a jet, you're a jet for life. Bit of a reference for you there, folks. How did it go? Mission accomplished? You'll have to wait a moment yet, Uncle. I just want to make sure I got the right one. Uh, it's the liqueur, right? I don't, I don't want to give him the wrong thing. Our house in the middle of the street. Yes, yeah, the liqueur. That's the red. That's the white. Liqueur. How did it go? I think this is the one Uncle wanted. Yes. This is our little Huge. funeral battle. <laughs> we would meet in Stasha's study after every funeral we went to and raise a toast to the dead. And recently, we've been seeing one another more and more at such events. More and more. But this time, even he has left me. So, to an easy death, as Stasha and I used to say. Hmm. How did he die? Hasn't Ligia told you? I haven't even had the chance to ask. He didn't suffer, but such images in the memory are better saved for later. I'd prefer to remember him as he was alive. What then? Am I drinking alone? Propose a toast. May the ground be soft, father. I'm not betting there's an afterlife. <sighs> <laughs> Didn't love that, did he? Well, obligation fulfilled. Shall we get to the reading of the will? At the funeral, there was this sad Jewish fellow, Mordechai Hayat. Do you know him, uncle? He worked for Stanislav, but that was a long time ago. I don't know him more than that. So, shall we collect our inheritance? You'll all have to wait for me a moment yet. All right, but hurry up. Liqueur is not alcohol, it is more of a tincture, in fact. Yes, a medicine, and since life is the most common fatal disease, well, to our health, then. What on earth is going on? Ah. Cool. Okay, let's make sure we've explored thoroughly. What's going on here? I've got another point. Uh, I don't think I can level up these ones any further because I don't have the appropriate um, 
whatever they're called. Um, sal salutor. So I guess we get Agony or Adrenaline Rush. Agony. Got a new skill. <clears throat> damage over time. 3 to 4 damage, 3 to 4 damage. What's the point? <laughs> oh, this skill additionally casts a state on a random enemy. Oh, okay. So that, if there's two of them, agony. If there's one, old wound. Uh, and then put that on that. Hello, child. Goodbye, child. There's a thing. There's a thing. Bust of Marana. The stern countenance resembles that of a human, but the callous gaze shows no trace of human emotions. The Queen of Winter scrutinizes you, sending a shiver down your spine. It makes me think of the words, if you gaze long enough into an abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. By Frederick Nietzsche, if I remember correctly. Oh, can I go into the garden? Where was the garden? There's a garden somewhere. <laughs> I swear to God. I don't, I don't want to go upstairs. Upstairs for nerds. Like, that's the area garden. Sweet. Let's have a little, little poke around outside. Before we go the correct direction. Hello, human. Everyone in the game is very active. They're all... No one just stands still or sits or reads. Or they're all standing but then going... Oh, but, oh, but, just doing random actions. Right, let's go upstairs. Buster Sirin. Sharp avian features bear a wild, disturbing kind of beauty. They make you want to fall into her clutches and be lulled into an eternal dream by her sweet song. Yet her cryptic, slight smile makes a subconscious primal part of your being carry away from the predator. But isn't a soul the only fair price for the bliss of giving yourself up to that enchanting creature? <gasps> I see clothing. I'm excited. Serious photo. <laughs> Straight back, stern expressions, noses in the air. Two boys that are just trying to meet everyone's expectations. Something went wrong here. If you want to change your clothes, use a wardrobe. You can expand your clothes collection by visiting the tailor. I still can't do anything. Oh. Oh. It's because I'm indoors. Okay, I see, I see. I see. Um, Pseudomonarchia... Ah! I, there's things I know about! Compared to Crowley's Ars Gosia, there are three... I, look, that, uh, this is what I was writing my... Literally, what I was writing my book about is this right here. So, the Ars Gosia by Crowley. God, what year was this? 1850, something like that, or 1750, I can't remember. Um, there are three fewer demons, right? So these are these are grimoires, black grimoires that are written, and they are recounting all the demons in hell. I can't remember the actual number. It's like 70, I think it was 69 in um, Pseudo, Pseudomon, Pseudomonarchia Daemonum, the 69 demons, and in Ars Gosha, the 72. Let me read it first. <clears throat> No evidence that all demons are solitors. Bathim, false lead. Pucel, false lead. Anton claims to have subjugated Orobas. Mere boasting. Marcosius, expected to take on the form of a wolf with the wings of a griffin and the tail of a snake. According to Duplancy, he takes the form of a wild lioness. Interesting, interesting observation by Crowley. Demons are unexplored fragments of our minds. However, in appearance, it resembles an ox with wings. Lead for Sapnok, unknown. Now, the interesting thing is... Is it Demo? No, see, he says Crowley's Ars Gosha. But if I remember correctly, Pseudomonarchia, we know who it was written by. I can't remember his name, but it's a German guy. I don't think it was Crowley. Or Crowley, whatever you want to call him, Crowley. Three fewer demons. No, no, because Ars Gosha, I'm pretty sure we don't know who wrote Ars Gosha, so I'm surprised by that. Maybe they've got a theory. Because um, I'm pretty sure that disappeared. And the suggestion by historians for Ars Gosha is that uh, basically they copied Daemonum and just mixed it up a little bit. Basically, just invented some random demons in order to um, in order to sell the book, you know, to pretend they had extra information. But you know, the demons. Ah, my desk is so dusty. Hadn't come from anywhere. 
So this this discrepancy, true story, this is kind of wild to me. <laughs> this discrepancy between the Ars Gosha and Pseudomonarchia Daemonum is literally the foundation for the novel that I've been working on. And like the, the basic principle, it, it spirals off a lot further than this, of course, but the basic principle was what if Ars Gosha, if the author of the Ars Gosha hadn't invented these random demons um, as a way to sell books, etc., etc., but if these demons had spoken to him and... Um, it turns out the demons were an old god, and it's, it all goes further from there, but that's very strange for me to see. <laughs> very exciting. I very rarely know these kind of things, but it's something I've done research on. Um, this has got quite a big um, history in um, Hermeticism. Hermeticism is very much the foundation religion for the book as well. We have their god Hermes Tri Trigimestus, which is a fusion of the Egyptian god of Thoth and the Greek god of Hermes. Message from mother. Dear child, stop. It is with great sorrow I received the news of Stanislav's death. Stop. Unfortunately, I'll not be able to attend the funeral ceremony. Stop. My duties in Paris keep me from travelling to Warsaw at this time. Stop. I join you both in mourning and sorrow. Stop. Mama. My letter from Rome, July 1896. Dear sister, I'm writing to you because sleep eludes me. As I wrote before, I found a suitable candidate. However, I'm still struggling to reach his floor. I feel that Paimon is within my reach. I even saw him, vaguely, but I did. I'll stop here because my nerves prevent me from continuing. W. Yes, I'll be careful. Don't think me a fool like father. I'm assuming that's when things went terribly for me. Like, we had some encounter with a... Um, a salutor that went badly, right, in the past, before the start of this game. I'm assuming it was Paymon. He was one of the three... I didn't know Proofflas. Proofflas was one of them added in... Uh, I was going to show. At the cemetery in Montmorency on Sunday, the body of the distinguished writer and citizen, the late Severina Duchinska, was laid to rest. A handful of compatriots escorted the coffin amidst the pouring rain. The funeral service was very modest, and according with the wishes of the deceased, the sums allocated for reefs were deposited in the coffers of the Claudia Potoka Charitable Society. The late Anthony something, retired, age 91. The late Barbara Chikala, age 45, and the late Stanislav Svolsky, entrepreneur, age 63. Warsaw Funeral Company, M. Titska. Company arranges fuels, exclamations, and the transportation of corpses. A factory warehouse of metal and wooden coffins. Morning hats, crepe paper, and a vast selection of items used in the time of mourning. A letter from Paris. Sister of mine, I feel well enough to write something to you. The doctor also recommended that I do so. Not alone in my anguish, I share a room with one Rhea Ford Morton, whose last name escapes me. Isn't it Morton? <laughs> they brought him from London, from Dr. C. Ward's clinic. Very interesting case. He spends his days hunting for the moths, cockroaches, ladybugs, and beetles that come here sometimes. He eats them. He says it gives him strength to wait for the coming of the Lord, but I don't think he means the saviour. I cannot yet reconstruct all the details after the debacle with Paymon. My mind is still in tatters. Paymon visited me no more than a week ago. I know that's impossible. It probably happened only in my mind, but it was so clear. He, as the king of hell, with his host of demons, with the shadows of his penitence, called for me to join them. It was so real. I'll stop here. I'm having a hard time gathering my thoughts. W. Booming up these levels. Let's go into heart next. Oh, it costs two. Oh, well. That makes sense. I, was, I, was, I felt like I was leveling up too fast. <laughs> um, I'm really excited by that. I'm hoping there's more references that I can talk about. I can see it being all linked. I will say, you know, obviously there's the extra demons and people think they just made them up. I mean, I think they all made it up. <laughs> I don't think the demons are real, but, you know, the, a lot of them were taken from old Latin texts and uh, stuff like that. Svulski, a family portrait. A family portrait. I can remember when it was taken. The year was 1884 and Liggy and I were nine years old at the time. She was clearly tense and I remember how mother admonished her not to smile, not to fidget and to stand straight. Women have always been told, women have been told, either don't smile or do smile, and it has changed throughout history. Don't tell people to smile, okay? Don't, no, don't tell anyone to smile, but, you know, people don't tell men to smile more, they only tell women to smile more, it's stupid. Ligia was to take the cue from her. Mother was able to freeze like a statue and sit there barely breathing for a couple of hours. I, on the other hand, posing nonchalantly, was always more unrestrained than my sister. I could get away with more. Behind us, our father, the head of the family, 
one hand resting patronizingly on the back of the Chez Lounge, asserting his ownership, the other holding a grimoire, the black grimoire. Behind father, a shadow, as if a shape was emerging and forming, indicating another presence. That's Baal Berith. The family is complete. We have a family salutor. I guess our father could have had one. Oh, yeah, our father would have, would have had one as a thaumaturge. Stanislas' last will. My last will written down in this year of our Lord, 1888. In the name of the Holy Trinity, amen. It is my first and irrevocable irrevocable, I hate that word, will that my daughter, Ligia Svulka, be appointed executrix of this will. Immediately following my death, let an inventory be taken and all my personal movables be sold by public auction. Let the money so collected be offered to beggars at the cemetery. Everything related to the family business I entrust into the custody of my daughter. I do not attribute the manner of administration to her, I only wish that the business be small, not risky, and honest as I run it. To my friend Alexander Veronin, I wish to leave a collection of muskets and two revolvers, dating back to the uprising to our first meeting. I also wish to aid my son Victor and entrust my grimoire to him, hoping he'll be able to make good use of it. It's my last will carried out sacredly, even if it seems burdensome to you. Another thing I'll probably do is have a pretty chill will. Here's my money, take the money, if I have any money. If I don't have any money, I'm sorry. <laughs> Move on with our lives. I am ready, Mr. Shulsky. I only need all of you to be present. Can we start reading your father's will? Still up. Yes, let his will be done. Begin. <laughs> Let's begin if everyone is ready. Would you all please take a seat? Such a sassy guy. Ladies and gentlemen, by the power of my office vested in me by the grace of His Imperial Majesty, the Emperor of All Russia, I hereby testify. Mr. Shulsky's last will and testament were prepared several years ago in the presence of Zaslav Fedorov, Esquire, that is, myself. My last will and testament recorded in the year of our Lord 1888. In the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Amen. Excuse me, but could we get to the details? Victor. <laughs> I think we all want to address more temporal matters, don't we? In theory... Would you be so kind? Of course. Ah, here we are. All movables and immovables relating to the family enterprise I entrust to the care and administration of my daughter. I do not prescribe a method of administering them. I merely offer her one piece of advice. To my brother-in-law and oldest friend, Alexander Voronin, I wish to leave the following. My collection of muskets and two revolvers dating to the uprising in memory of our first meeting. Stasio. I will have plenty to do in my retirement. Enjoy your retirement. I wish you success with your business and your hunting. I'm going to have something to eat before heading off. Just a moment yet, Mr. Shulsky. Your name is also mentioned here. <laughs> a last minute plot twist. I would also like to come to the aid of my only son, Viktor Shulsky, by entrusting him with the use of my personal black grimoire, in the hope that he will be able to make good use of it. This is my last will and testament. Carry it out solemnly, though you may have found it burdensome. However, this last bequest poses a certain problem. Yes, it certainly does. And what is that, may I ask? I am not in possession of this grimoire. The late Mr. Shulsky used it up until his death. Yet no one left it with me after his passing. Meaning it's disappeared? Did father have his grimoire on him at the time of his death? It was only because of the grimoire that we could identify him at all. What actually happened? How did he die? 
A building collapsed on top of him. I don't know any other way of putting it. A building? It collapsed on top of him? How? How did this happen? It was a day like any other. Papa had gone for his habitual walk. Every Tuesday and Thursday, he'd take a stroll to get some space, as he put it. When he didn't come back for a long time, I got the bad feeling something had happened. Then... We rode there together. An entire wall of a tenement had collapsed. There were three victims, including Stasio, who had the bad luck to simply be walking by. To see him there in that condition, it's beyond description. The Grimoire. Could someone have taken it? Perhaps, in all that confusion? But why would anyone want Papa's Grimoire? An ordinary person won't use it. Would the Tarmator just happen to be passing by? Father had all his knowledge in there. But I don't know if it would be useful to someone other than him. I don't even know why he left it to me. I'm sure Stasio had a reason. I mean, is there not a suggestion? I mean, to me, this screams rival Tharmaturge <clears throat> killed him to take his Grimrock, right? Surely? Where did it happen? Where was this building? The southern part of Shudmieszcie, not far from the police station. Anyway, you can miss it. So that's where it is. I've seen this place. I'd rather not imagine what condition you found father in there. Of all the possibilities, this was the death that fate prepared for him. Shrodmiście. Shrodmiście. He died as he lived, miserably. He couldn't have met a more fitting end after what he did to me. What he did to the Nijic family. You've got to know that Papa felt guilty. Even if he didn't say so outright. I'm not going to defend him, but I can't criticize him either. Even I don't know what really happened back then with Avoritsa. An accident is what happened, and Father treated two kids like the worst disgraces in the world. As if it had been premeditated. When a person dies so suddenly, their unfinished business remains. We'll never learn what Stasio carried in his heart. What do you intend to do? And Mordechai Hayat. Could that be a lead? I don't think so. He worked with father, but he left more than a year ago. I don't know why. He was an assistant at our, well, my store. Do you know where I might find him? Sadly, no. Do you have any other ideas? Father evidently knew a certain Ivan Konechkin. Have you heard anything about him? Konechkin? No, doesn't ring a bell. All sorts of people came to Papa's store. That doesn't mean every one of them might know something about the grimoire. That's true. You've got your work cut out for you. And where are Father's things at the moment? You're standing at the very center of his kingdom. Not everything has been sorted through yet, but you go right ahead. And the store? I should check that too. I've started stock taking there to distract myself, and I don't want you to go in there before I've finished. As you wish. I think we have to look for the answer in the place where it happened. With your sight, you can make out more in those ruins than I, or uncle, or detective could. This is a good lead, but is it the only one? Now at least I can see how little I know. Maybe these scraps of information will lead me somewhere. Well, now that we know what's got to be figured out, forgive me, my darlings. I'm going to give my old bones a rest. I'll see you out. Goodbye, Uncle. And, uh, Ligia. I'm sorry it happened this way. 
that I wasn't close by. The most important thing is you're here now. She says that, but if I keep picking these prideful answers, she, she's clearly not going to be impressed with me. She, she remembers all of them, and they're all terrible. <clears throat> Hello, Pia. How do you find your old stomping ground? Yes, I'm not too fond of this place either. This is where I had my last conversation with my father, just before I left. If you can call it a conversation. Can you see my dreams? Nightmares, actually. Ever since I decided to come back, I keep reliving the same memory. The Lone Shark Incident. I've been seeing his death more and more lately. I wonder if his shop is still there. Perhaps we should go there and check. My casual friend. Limited quest. Hmm. Ball Bereth. My father's first salutor, probably not the only one, a perfect match. Ancient idol mentioned in the Book of Judges. Secretive by nature, keeper of vegetation and master of insects, he can command in order to protect people from diseases. According to Ars Gosia, Balbera belongs to the circle of greater demons just like father. They're greater and minor. The flaws that attract him are much like with the Upia, those related to the heart dimension, the sensations of the heart, pride, blasphemy, contentiousness, but also consistency, stubbornness and ambition. Balbereth is gone, he left with my father. Where? We do not know what happens to Salutors after a Thaumaturge's death. Perhaps they become wild again, unhindered by the pact, and he stays. Meh. <laughs> with their master. But the floor that used to tether them is gone, so maybe they vanish into the void too. You are so beautiful, fallen angel. Full of grace, energy, and colour. I thought you would become my teacher, that you would open the world of philosophy, art, and magic to me. That together we would discover the secrets of Earth's elements and the secrets of people's hearts. That I would become something more, that having as many as two salutors, I would reach for what is available only to the strongest. Instead, you broke me. You brought nightmares and visions that crossed my mind to dust. Because of you, I'm nothing but a shadow. Lovely. Alright, let's have a little poke around the house, I guess. See if we can find... So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here. The human heart is worth more than all the riches of the material world. Tonight. SR. Letter addressed to father, signed with initials SR. The message only appears to be brief. In fact, the pen strokes were accompanied by an accelerated heartbeat, motivated by a restrained fondness for the addressee. The ink is dripping with special care and warmth that seeped deep into the paper. Who is this mysterious woman? Books on ancient cultures. Father would pore over the yellowed pages again and again, reading the same words over and over, trying to extract meaning from them. He repeated the words about dedication and the necessity of sacrifice like a mantra, slamming shut one volume and reaching for another. What does it all mean? Suitcase. Grains of desert sands from father's trip to Africa had settled on the suitcase. He would set it aside, spinning plans for future voyages into the unknown regions of the material world, searching for what was hidden behind the veil of reality. I'm just gonna... Uh, which one do we want more? So it's four health points for every enemy in the suffering state. Eh. Or... Eh, more damage. Oh, it's a double. Adrenaline rush. Increases inflicted damage by 50%. I don't know what it means when it says self-cast. Also, what does that mean? You buy upgrades with that. Oh, right, okay. That's this. How far this goes on for? Ritual mask. A wooden mask representing a salutor known as Shrail. The demonic countenance is clothed in the hope that clung to its first and the satisfaction that soon followed. It seems that father had plans for Shrail, which he eventually managed to fulfill. Hmm. 
Something upstairs, I think. Collection of books on the occult. Titles include Pseudomonarchia, Daemonum, Lemeton, and Picatrix. The grimoires of historical occultists brim with paternal inquisitiveness. The warm pages full of annotations in the margins bear the marks of frequent reading, his heart beating with excitement. Father explored mysteries of demonology, thus expanding his horizons. Father's thoughts were recently occupied with a search for knowledge that bordered on the obsessive. This is related to something much more than his usual curiosity about the world, which I remember him for. He was looking for something, hunting for salutors, exploring the mysteries of everything related to thaumaturgy. The only thing I still don't know is where it led him. Did it, gang? What's the Ligia? Who is downstairs? It's so exciting to see that mentioned. I can't get over it. Oh, telephone. Telephone. Hello. I talk here. Do you hear me now? Victor? Victor, are you there? Grigori? Yes. Victor, uh, where are you? On the other end of the line, at home, where the telephone rang. <laughs> Incredible. You know, when uh, Graham Bell, it was Graham Bell, right? Invented the telephone. He wanted people say, he wanted people to say ahoy. He he proposed ahoy as like the greeting that people would say when they answered the phone. So a little change in history, and hello wouldn't be a greeting. We'd go ahoy. <laughs> uh, what's up? Has something happened? To me? No. I am telecommunicating with you to say I found lodgings here in Warsaw. If you need me, I'm by the cemetery. Uh, what number is it? Uh, yes, yes. 7 Boboskowska Street. Uh, number 7 by cemetery. Boboskowska. I'm glad. It's good to hear your voice. <laughs> it's good to hear you as well. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, I want to end now. What do I... Uh, like this? Wonderful device. Remarkable. Halo? Oh. And now? Rasputin, Rasputin, lover of the Russian Queen. That's it, right? Okay, side quest. Oh, that's a timed one. Gotta go see the Lone Shark. Okay, we've got to do that first. Then. Well, we'll talk to Thingy while we're here. Ligia. Have you found anything yet about the grimoire? Is there any way I can help? The woman's trace she found in the study. Yeah, I was gonna remark, she's, she's changed. She's wearing unusual clothing. The trousers are an original style. Until now, I'd only seen women in trousers in the East. First of all, they're practical. It's the 20th century. It's high time we started dressing comfortably. I agree. You've always been brave, never afraid of anything or anybody. Like when Mother almost had a fit because you dumped my best eye in hot cocoa. I didn't care that she was angry. I wanted to get you back for not wanting to play with me. Fair enough. Because you were being too annoying. Also fair you enough. You meant to say brave. By the way, Grazina still makes cocoa every evening. You can conjure up the flavor of childhood if you want. Is there anything else you want to talk about? I can't tell Grazina it means like grandmother or if it means maid. What's next for you? You're in charge here now. Have you got some kind of grand scheme? A grand scheme? Well, for now, I'm just trying to keep my head above water. Certain customers are unconvinced that a woman can handle running a business. What's worse, a woman without powers. You know what I mean. A thaumaturge at my side would shut them all up. After all, it's your heritage too. I don't know anything about running a company, but if I can help in any way, you can count on me. Thank you. That means a lot to me. I trust the smoke doesn't bother you. 
You used to detest the smell of tobacco. You'd hold your breath going into Father's study. That's true, but when I'd stay here, alone with Papa, and somehow over the years I got used to it. I don't know when I started copying him, even. Daddy's girl. You were always closer to him. That's not true. I was just less rebellious than you, his thaumaturge son. Now come on, what else is on your mind? Well, Daddy really has been ruined. <laughs> In Father's study, I found a trace of a woman that I couldn't identify. Probably Svetlana Rumyantseva. I'm sorry, what? Who is she? And what does Father have to do with her? Svetlana is a Russian aristocrat who travels with the Romanov's court. I can only tell you she was a customer of Father's. A customer? If you don't want to say, then don't. Where can I find her? When she's in town, she stays at the Imperial Hotel. She might know something that will help me find the Grimoire. Not so fast. To get in, you're going to need me and my connections. Svetlana is famous for her soirées where she hosts the Crème de la Crème Warsaw. <laughs> I know what a soirée is. We don't need to ask. We could go together. How about... You track down some evening clothes, and I'll sort out the invitation. And I won't take no for an answer. Sadly, you never give me a chance. Unfortunately, everything in my wardrobe is antediluvian. I need a tailor. There's a shop at 11 Pruzhna Street that's fairly decent and quick. We also have barbers in Warsaw in case you want to do something about whatever you have growing on your head and face so we know the word antediluvian or whatever the heck it was which i don't know as a term it must be said but we don't know what soiree means okay master victor let me guess have you come for some hot cocoa it's very cute how she says cocoa yes a cup of cocoa would do me good help yourself the pot is in the salon along with some of your favorite cookies Cookies. It's been an age since we've seen one another. I'm glad you're back. Mistress Ligia is really struggling with everything. And so, the great Stanislav Shulsky is dead, crashed by a building. Can't say I'd wish a death like that on anybody. An awful death. Sheer cruelty. Mr. Shulsky didn't deserve it. Now all we can do is think back on what a wonderful man he was. Uh-huh. That won't take long. <laughs> Ligia won't open up to me, but how is she doing? She's having a rough time, the poor dear. Her heart is heavy, though she doesn't show it, but she's strong. She keeps her chin up and doesn't give in. And it's good she's got you to help now, Master. Only she started smoking like a chimney. She takes after her father, no question about it. I really don't like being called Master. Or Sir. You know, people have a <clears throat> habit. In romantic relations, for example, and people maybe drop the word sir in there quite a lot blah 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 and it just it's it's it, it's it's so formal it just it i don't know it's weird i hate i hate it i know loads of people must love it because people keep bloody doing it but uh i always find it very strange so this death what do you make of it Grishenka? i'll tell you in confidence master shulsky now I'm a simple woman, but something about your father's death doesn't sit right with me. How do you mean, Grazenka? Don't you suspect some impure powers had a hand in it? I did, actually. Do you mean it could have something to do with thaumaturgy? That I don't know. Look at us jabbering while there are potatoes not peeled. Forgive me, master. <laughs> Let's stop talking about the death of your father. <laughs> I've got potatoes to peel. Another time, Grzynka. I'll get out of your way. Always ample work, but I can always snatch a moment for a chit-chat with you, master. Where's this cocoa? I will end up. 
Where's the cocoa? Do you want to go visit a barber? Do you know the secret to time travel? It requires but one sip of cocoa. All of a sudden, Ligia is reading a book in front of the fireplace and I'm stacking building blocks. My parents are arguing in the smoking room. It's a warm day and then everything goes to hell. Do you folks have an equivalent for this? I don't have many strong food memories, drink memories, stuff like that from childhood. You know, I don't associate anything with my parents cooking wise. Um, <clears throat> the only thing I have in that regard is my grandmother, my nana, would make um, hot pot. And that was a big thing, part of my childhood. Um, not much beyond that. However, Horlicks. Horlicks. Horlicks and Bucks Fizz are the two drinks that always take me back to my childhood for me. Uh, anyways, we will end it there. Next video, we're going to go to the tailor, get some evening wear. We're going to help a barber as well. And we're going to go try to see this uh, loan shark before we do much else, because it seems to be a timed mission, so we should probably prioritize that. And we'll do that. Ooh, didn't know I could do this. We'll do that in the next video. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you lovely folks very soon. Cheers, much of as always. Bye-bye.